guys, it is Thursday night. It's Thursday. Yay. Um, you guys are live here on the Dixie Bell Paint page. We're live on Facebook and on Instagram. So hi to everybody. Uh, my name is Brandy. I'm a Dixie Bell Paint brand ambassador and I'm the owner and artisan behind Brushed by Brandy. And I paint here with you guys live every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, <clears throat> so I gave you guys a little sneak peek of what we're going to be working on tonight. I do want to give you guys a note on camera though. Um, I want to start another start to finish piece with you guys, but I have so many orders right now and so many projects that are started because I need to fulfill those orders. I just cannot start another project right now. So we're going to work on my orders and then when I get a little more through them, um, we'll be able to start something new together. So tonight we're going to be working on this headboard here and this bed frame, it's a bed frame. This headboard's got to be six feet tall. Um, and um, this is actually a custom order and so um, my customer and I picked the colors out together and we're going to go for a very soft and blended look and then we're going to use the center section here to frame out a transfer. It's probably just going to be a script transfer. This is my basic color scheme. My colors are a little bit off. For example, um, in the center here I used paint blue and that's not going to be what one of my colors is. I only used it because I had a little bit of paint left over working on another project and was like, I'm just gonna throw it on here as a base coat instead of wasting that little bit of color. So that's the wrong color. Um, but otherwise my color scheme's my basic layout and you guys have seen me do a blended look before where I use my base coat to get my color scheme roughly laid out. It's a very rough coat. So that's all I've got on here right now is a very rough coat. To prepare this piece, I did clean it with Dixie Belle White Lightning and I put a base of slick stick underneath it. And that's just because this was a high gloss finish and it's massive and it's got a lot of detail. It would have been really hard for me to sand all, or scuff sand all this detail and take that gloss down. So I use uh, Dixie Belle Slick Stick as a base coat um, after I cleaned this. So, Sorry, just throwing it out there. Christina's mom is on. What? <laughs> really? Hi. That's cool. Um, uh, and hi to Leah, Sheila, everybody. Hi. Christina is sleeping right now. I usually don't talk to her till like 2 a.m. when I'm going to bed in California. <laughs> She's just waking up in Germany. So you that's... mean when you're thinking about going to bed at 2 uh, o'clock yeah, in the morning? Yeah, yeah, when I wish I was going yeah. to bed. Um, okay, so let me go over my, my colors with you guys. So starting over at this end right here, we start out with Dixie Belle Stormy Seas, which is a deep blue. Um, I'm going to blend that into some dark gray at the bottom. I'm going to use Dixie Belle Hurricane Gray. Um, I've got a softer blue here, um, which is going to be Vintage Duck Egg. We'll use a little bit of Manatee Gray also to work that Hurricane Gray up into the blues. We're going to work our blues into our grays. This one keeps losing a little in and out on focus, like it's trying to pick up something on there. Uh, Dixie Belle Driftwood. Dried sage is what I've got way up here at the top. That's just a little pop of, of a different color that'll kind of bring out that emblem up there. I don't know if I'll be able to get uh, to work on that tonight. And then sawmill gravy is what's going to go in the center. And I chose sawmill gravy because I'm working with the grays. And sawmill gravy is a white with Careful kind of gray really undertones. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I've already given this just a light scuff sand with my sanding sponge and then wiped it free of any dust. So right now I've just got a base coat that's nice and sanded and dust free. Okay, I'm gonna start over here. Can you see this side of it okay? Yes ma'am. Okay, I'm gonna start over here with my um, Stormy Seas. And it's hot today. We actually have the door open in my workspace because it's so hot. And I think that air conditioning interferes with, uh, or the sound interferes with the microphone. So we're gonna try that out and see if that helps. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and lay a coat on I'm using my Dixie Belle Mini, using water. I want to <laughs> keep this paint wet. I do not want to let this paint dry tonight. I've got a large space to blend over and my paint cannot dry or I won't make it to that other side. And I'm just going to try to work small sections at a time, um, starting with this edge over here. I'm going to give myself some fresh paint. This is our stormy seas. Oh, sorry. Sheila wants me to tell you that it sounds great. Oh, good. Okay. No, she I was made. Talking, she was very adamant. I was talking to Sheila about it earlier, and I, Sheila, I appreciate the help because she was giving me some feedback on what she was noticing. 
and I don't know what exactly it is with, with the sound. I know it's that I'm further away from the camera than Sean is. You guys will always hear Sean better than, I, than me because he's sitting right next to it and I'm actually painting while Sean does nothing. Maybe it's my harmonizing in the background that's throwing yeah. it off. Ah, ah, me, me, me. I'm sure that's it. Oh yeah, you're, that spot needs more light just because we have the light coming in from behind us that what, over you're in like a corner? dark area. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna keep moving. You're in the shadow. I'm gonna move that direction out of the shadows. Nobody puts a baby in the corner. All right, I'm gonna get into this corner and then I'm gonna come in with my hurricane gray. My hurricane gray is what's gonna go across the bottom. And this piece is gonna be a challenge because it's so large. I need to keep this paint moving. So I'm gonna come in with a clean brush and give myself some paint down here at the bottom. My base coat on my gray is, um, is actually gravel road. And it's a little too dark, so I'm going to just cover it with some Hurricane Gray, which is just a shade lighter than the gravel road. Sheila says she just hears my lips flapping. <laughs> yeah, that's all I hear too, Sheila. I'm right there with you, girl. I'm surprised you hear anything. What? Huh? <laughs> okay, and I will be carrying my uh, Hurricane Gray down onto the lake, so I'm not going to worry about those right now. Because we want to get to the good stuff. Nobody wants to see me just put another coat over the legs on this cupboard. So already I'm getting a nice blended look on here. I want to carry the Hurricane Gray up a little higher on the sides, I think. Keeping my paint wet. It's going to take lots of water. Um, this has had a chance to dry, and as long as I've let my uh, base coat of paint dry, I'm able to work the colors over the top without interfering with my um, base coat at all. So I'm back here with the brush for my Stormy Seas, and I'm just freshening that color up and working it into that Hurricane Gray that I added um, closer to the bottom. That's an airplane. Huh? <laughs> oh wait, it was just Sean talking. <laughs> what brush are you using, by the way? This is the Dixie Belle Mini. So these are my favorite brushes for laying paint on. Um, they are currently sold out on the website. Um, it's because of COVID supply chain issues. It's just harder to get materials right now. Um, Dixie Belle is keeping us as well supplied as they can. But even our retailers are running short on brushes right now. Um, they've just been all bought up. So be patient. If you don't already have one, know that they're coming back. Um, but that's just the way of the world right now. Sean actually went to, you went to Walmart last night and there, I mean, there's nothing on the shelves anywhere, guys. Nothing's coming in from overseas right now, including materials that are needed to make things like brushes and, um, Dixie Belle does most of their manufacturing in the United States, but you got to consider there are things that come from overseas, like, you know, lids for containers and, um, you know what I just noticed? I mean, no, I, I, I you're yapping and all, but I want to get to Dana's very important question here. What's that? She's wondering if our neighbors still have a rooster. Oh my God. And starting this right before we came on late. We were just joking that we could hear the rooster. It goes all day long. But apparently the rooster has to stop and watch your video as well because it, it's not going right now. God, thank God. That thing drives me nuts. So I paint out here a lot. And that rooster crows literally 24-7. I thought roosters just crowed like in the morning when, you, when they wake up, you know. That's the... I don't know. That's the, the sounds sign of, of a nature. Rooster, right? Yeah. They crow at dawn. Nope, this rooster goes every five seconds all day long. Like you would think that its voice box would get a little bit hoarse by the end of the day, but nope. So maybe anybody who owns roosters can tell me, is that normal? We do, obviously do not own roosters. <laughs> and Chicken will, soup. And will not own roosters ever. No. Oh my, paint has a little oh my gosh. Like so I mentioned that uh, they had a cousin who had one and it crowed all day as well. Oh, it doesn't ever stop. So I just had a little skin on my paint. So here's the, here's the reason. When I'm painting, 
I will end up with five containers of paint sitting open, and if this coat takes me an hour, then they sit open for an hour. I could take my paint and transfer it into another container, but I generally don't. So that was just a little skin on the top of my paint that just forms from it being exposed to the air. I just peeled that part off. This is vintage duck egg. So I'm working this in. I'm gonna come back with my brush for my stormy seas, and I'm just gonna work this little line out here and soften it a little bit. Add a little bit of wet paint. Oh, it's normal for them to crow all day long. Oh, Lord. Oh, let me get the barbecue. Then. <laughs> I know. And TCB. You know, you know what I don't understand, though, is that people who live next door to us, like two of them are nurses, and I know they work odd hours, so don't they get sick of the rooster, too? I love that I have Maybe the clock in the video. Because their house is far enough away. The clock's in the video? Only for the grammars. Yeah, you guys, uh, Instagram requires a vertical orientation, so Instagram has a little bit different orientation on their picture than They get to Facebook see my, my fire tape on the sheetrock. Yeah, hey, uh, so the, my workspace is in our garage. And Nobody's saying anything. I'm just... Um, our garage on our house was unfinished when we moved in, so I came out here and like half of it I um, textured and painted. So Rhonda mentions she sat when the rooster, her rooster took a uh, untimely demise. I'm wondering if she assisted that process. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you were heartbroken. Oh look, it's a cute rooster. And then a couple weeks later, no more rooster. Nobody says, oh, look, it's a cute rooster. I even no? follow, like, some of the homesteading pages in our area. Uh -huh. We live in kind of a rural area, and nobody says, hey, what a cute rooster. A lot of the times they're looking for anybody who wants to rehome a rooster, a.k.a. make dinner from a rooster. Exactly. Um, okay, so this is my brush for my stormy seas, and I'm just working this vintage duck egg. So I'm only working one transition at a time. And now I'm going to come here and soften where it meets up right here with my um, gravel rug. Yeah, it's pretty rude how you have your back to the camera. I know. I'm it's like you don't like to. us. This is just so big and I can't turn it. I mean, it. I'm used to it. I can't turn it at an angle, so this is what my back looks like, guys. Do I have a logo on the back of my shirt? No, you should. Okay. This is, I know, I, this is perfect marketing time right now. This shirt is actually from Recycled. Do you guys know Recycled? With her, she has papers, decoupage papers. This is one of her shirts. We love Recycled. I would wear a shirt with her logo on it. All right. So now I've got my um, gravel road. This is my clean, dry brush. I'm just softening out this transition. And you're just spritzing some water just on there. Water. It's just water, guys. It just keeps my paint wet and moving. So as I get into the center, this is where I'm going to. I'm going to move my little table of paint. Wait, over. what? Heather said she just did a bed exactly like this. I thought this was a one of a kind. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be. I when I sold it, I sold it that way. All right, so the majority of my center is going to be um, uh, uh, sawmill gravy. And I think I'm going to add in a little bit of driftwood just to pull the grays into the center. I don't want it to get too blue. So I'm opening up my driftwood. It's all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to add a little bit of water in there just because I have so little paint in there. Ta da! What was the ta da? Get a lot extra paint out of there. Throw a little water oh, in there. Yeah. Oh. yeah, a little bit of water. Easy that killer. More paint. Yeah. So this is and my budget paint. This is my driftwood. And I'm just going to concentrate on this area right now, and then I'll have to get up there and get at the top. But just one area at a time. And I like to make the transitions between colors and spaces that you'll notice them. So not right here on top of this molding. I'm going to bring it over a little bit so you can see these two colors where they come together. I think it just makes it prettier if you're going to have 
multiple colors. Jason's amazed at how fast you can do this. He's envious of your talent. Oh, thanks, Jason. This would probably take me, if I wasn't on camera, probably take me about an hour to coat this. This is a really big piece. This is a challenging one for me, too. I probably would not have opted to do this on camera, <laughs> but it just happened to be what I need to do tonight, so you guys get to see it, too. And I'll see how far I get. I don't anticipate I'll get through the whole thing on camera. That would be a really long live. Hey. You guys would write letters and complain about me. Letters? Dixie Bell would fire me. Yep, they write letters. Who writes letters anymore? I mean, unless you're in prison. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello. But even they're getting out. Yeah, yeah even they have email. <sighs> So um, my clean dry brush I keep popping out. That's my Dixie Belle Oval Medium. And I try to keep this in cl as clean and dry as possible. It may start getting muddy as I work across here and I may need to get out a second one. And that's okay. So when I start out, I make sure I've got, so far I've used one, two, three, four brushes and my Oval Medium. So I just get out like seven brushes. Can you please take it down a notch? Stop Ooh. using so many brushes. Am I, oh, I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> Talking. Uh, I know. I be, did be kind do of the a paint video. Brush your cleaner out. Uh, <clears throat> um, blending with a single brush, and I did ten colors with one brush. It does work. It actually um, is kind of a cool technique to do because you end up creating a whole bunch of different colors in between the colors you're blending, also. So I'm looking at this here and I think I might go ahead and eliminate this section of the driftwood. I just think it might be excessive and I'm just going to work the um, vintage duck egg in a little bit more. I think that'll work and then we'll simplify it and then we can kind of... What color were you just using? So that was sawmill gravy. See then I can carry the blue in the center here and soften that out a little bit, which I like. Yeah. How are you doing on that water? Doing okay in the bottle? Oh yeah, this okay. one's totally full. Yeah, make sure you have a full um, mister bottle when you're starting a project like this because I'm going to go through a ton of water. And the water helps keep my paint wet and moving. It also helps reduce the brush strokes because this is a, a Dixie Bell's a self-leveling paint. If I keep it wet, most of my brush strokes will level out. <laughs> Gail wants to know what are the dimensions of this headboard? I don't know. They're like 20 feet so, tall by... So let's see. <laughs> I'm 5'6". Where are we? What's up? Oh, six. man. You think it's 6 feet? No. No? Wow. Every Lisa says every synthetic brush is out of stock. Yeah, every single brush is synthetic brush is out of stock. Every one of them is. You can sign up on the website to get emails when they come back in stock and it'll notify you and you can try to snatch one up, but they're not coming back in stock right now. Um, so just be patient, just be patient. And um, you know, this time isn't gonna last, but you know things are different in the world right now and that's one of the consequences of it. Hey, what's that dark color down at the bottom? The dark color down at the bottom right now is gravel road it's going to be changed into her come on now. gray that was just what i used for my base coat but the thing with gravel road is what's interesting is in the container it's a dark gray when you thin gravel road out to blend it it has browns in it um so i don't think it's going to work with my overall color scheme but that was what i used as my base coat Hello. Oh. <laughs> yeah, say good morning. Hey, Mo. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm back with my vintage duck egg. And actually pulling away lets me see what's going on over there. First of all, I want to say that I love that combination of hurricane gray, stormy seas, and vintage duck egg. Just this little panel right here, those three colors are gorgeous together. Um, all this, I will, I will glaze all those details so they really stand out on the finished product. Same thing with the ones up at the top. Everything will be glazed huh. with a transfer in the center. Look at that. Everybody heard the rooster. You know the nice <laughs> thing about being on this side, this side of the camera? I'm going to go take care of business. 
You're only gonna hear it one more time. I'm gonna go choke him out. <laughs> I was like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, the chicken cage is right at the front line. That's all I'm saying. Might just have to release the hound. Yeah, Ginger. <laughs> Got a new friend for you, Ginger. Uh, Ginger does like the rooster. She does want to go over there, but it's oh yeah, just the rooster. Yeah. How about well, that deer this morning? Oh yeah, yeah. she wants to be friends with all the animals. She does not discriminate. I think the deer had a little bit of a problem with that relationship. No, we don't get free eggs, man. Do I wish? <laughs> Here's my thing about chickens, though, and getting eggs. People who get chickens, you know they they have those at the store. They sell the egg, they sell huh? eggs at the store. Yeah, it's like four dollars too <laughs> for a lot of them. <laughs> so okay, I'm just get up a little bit, and I'm gonna work this sec this section out. This is my brush for my sawmill gravy. And I need to work it into this vintage duck egg, which means I'm going to need this all to be wet for a minute. So let's get a really quick blending session on just a section like this. And go. And go. Okay, I made my whole section wet. I like to wet my piece. I usually do not wet my brushes. I wet my furniture piece. I'm brushing this horizontally and vertical, vertically just for coverage. Okay, I'm keeping it wet. I want this to be wet paint. You cannot blend dry paint. It gets sticky. Your brush is going to get stuck. You're going to get brush strokes. Now I'm going to give myself some vintage duck egg. And then I'm going to really work this seam out. Oh, I'm sure the fresh is better. Fresh chicken, fresh eggs. <laughs> fresh, yeah. John's just thinking about eating the chicken. Yep. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to take my brush for my sawmill gravy. It has very, has very little paint on it, near none. And I'm just going to brush it straight through where these two colors meet up. I'm going to oh. brush it up into the vintage stuck egg. See, we've kind of just digressed from your painting techniques. No, you guys need to listen. In I'm fact, kidding. people are going to get mad at me. If you don't stop talking about the chicken when I'm talking right now, people are going to get mad. So you guys will have to catch up later. And then we'll have story time. Okay, so I, I brushed my sawmill gravy straight through that transition where it's much softer. And now I'm gonna take my clean dry brush. My paint is still wet. And I'm gonna soften out where those two meet up. And I kind of feather it out. I'm not using any particular brush stroke because I can clean that up. A very soft hand, you guys, very little pressure, just the tips of my brush are laying in this. I can feel my brush start picking up paint. I set that down for a minute. I'm gonna lay my brush off as much as I can. It's still gonna have some paint on it. Okay, now I'm gonna come do the same thing over here, but it's been sitting for a second. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water, just a mist. I know the light is hitting this weird too because we have the door open tonight. Is that making a weird glare on it? Yeah. I'm gonna come over here. And changing my position actually lets me see it from a different angle because I am getting weird light on this side and then I can see this side a little bit differently too. This is just my clean dry brush, just going over where those colors met up and softening them out. I can pull, if I feel like I wanna move the color around, I can pull my vintage duck egg over into my um, sawmill gravy and then I can clean up those brush strokes very soft so i missed right onto my paint um if it's a light enough mist you don't even need to come back and brush it out it will just evaporate so if you missed it over the paint that you're not working on right now that's what i'm talking about if you just missed it lightly it will just evaporate and yeah. you won't even notice that it was there because it's such a fine mist if it gets heavy or you touch it then you have to fix it you have to then come back and work that color out. So I'm gonna let this dry. I can see I've got some wet paint versus dry paint here in the center. So I need to let it dry and see what it dries into. 
So in the meantime, I need to get this bottom into the hurricane gray. Oh, such a pretty color. Okay, now you may talk about the chicken. I think we're good. Oh, no, the moment has passed? Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Where do you get your Mr. Bottles? So this is also from Dixie Bell. It's also out of stock right oh. now. I know. The paint you can get. The paint you can get. Everything else, check on it because there's... Gosh, you guys, be patient. That's all I can say because Dixie Bell is working on this every single day. But it is the way of the world that we are living in right now. So the paint is totally manufactured in-house. So thankfully, we don't have a paint shortage at all. I really want to be sitting center on this and not moving side to side. That would be much, much easier. But I'm moving side to side so that you guys don't lose a view of it. Okay, this is my Hurricane Gray. Getting it nice and wet, letting it kind of thin out as I get to the top because that's where I get to start working it in. Number one to the Vintage Duck Egg. I'm going to take my clean dry brush, clean that up a little bit. Not paying attention to where it meets up with the sawmill gravy. I'm not there yet. I'm just going to work on two colors at a time. All right, I got a little bit of color on my brush and it distorted the color of the vintage duck egg right there. So I'm just gonna fix that. It's right here too. Super soft pan. This is my brush from my Hurricane Gray. I'm bringing a little bit more of that back in. All right, I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Claudia leaves when you clean, you curve the corners. What's that? Is it Claudia loves when you curve the corners like oh, that? Oh yeah, I'm bringing my Hurricane Gray up a little bit just along the frame of this here. Now it's going to darken and then I can use waxes when this is dry. And I, it's usually the combination of the waxes that deepen the paint in spots. I'll use black wax to deepen the paint. So it's usually the combination of the waxes and the paint that you see. And then I got my sawmill gravy right here in the center that I'm going to soften this all up. Keeping in mind that I have dry paint here. This is dry going into wet paint, so it's going to look uneven right now. Sometimes I will go back over a spot two or three times. If I let this dry and it's not looking how I want it to, then I can come back and just work this center section without redoing the whole headboard. So keep in mind with multiple colors like this, I may have spots that I just don't care for how they worked out. So when you're dry brushing, you do you use a spray bottle? Um, dry brushing with the clean dry brush? Yes. No, usually I'm not. I wait until the paint gets to a point where it's still got moisture in it. I can still see that it's wet, but it's not sopping wet. And so then I'm just brushing together the, uh, I don't know how to explain it. You can tell the sheen on the paint changes. 
and I'm just brushing it together when it's got very little moisture left in it still. Where's my herky gray brush here? Just soften out that herky gray, super soft hand, super soft. Like that's one thing that's very hard for me to convey is how lightly I'm touching my paint sometimes. And then this is my clean gray brush and I've got very little moisture in this paint. And I'm gonna just feather out those brush strokes. Got a spot right there where it had gotten sprayed and I touched it so now I've gotta fix it. So I just brushed it out if I would have left it alone, I wouldn't have had to do that. So now I'm just going to feather that back in where I had to get it wet again. Okay. I don't like this right here. I can't tell from this side because I've got a weird glare on it. I need to fix over there. Does your paint ever lift when you blend? No, it colors. should not be lifting. If your paint is lifting when you're blending, you've got two things going on. Number one, you've overworked it. Could be three things, I guess. You've overworked it. You're just working the same spot for too long. Put a coat on it, let it dry again. So that's one thing, you've just way overworked it. Second thing could be you didn't prep it correctly and your base coat is not attached well enough. And that's a prep issue. So make sure that you're prepping your paint well. The third thing is let it dry in between coats. So don't come back an hour later and think you're gonna be able to blend a coat that you just put on. Um, I usually let it dry at least overnight before I come blend a coat over the top. So it's either you've overworked it, you um, your paint hasn't dried enough, or you've got a prep issue and your coat underneath is lifting. See, when I'm sitting on this side, I don't hate this as much. That's I need to be head on with this part right here. So I'm gonna come back over and start working this. This is my vintage duck egg. Come over and try to get down this leg. A brush holds a lot of paint, you guys. I, have, I don't use a lot of paint. Um, when I did the blending technique with one brush, People ask me, aren't you worried about contamination? No, because by the time I brush out the very little amount of paint that I use and the water that I use, it's gonna take most of the paint out of my brush. And then when I tip it back into my container, I've got very little paint on there. It's just touching the very top. The contamination is so low, I don't worry about that. So if I'm using one brush and sharing it between containers, this is my brush for my Stormy Seas. I also don't want the center to look like an oval, so I'm letting that dry and I'm just keeping an eye on it. If it starts looking like an oval, then I'm going to come work it back out again. I want it to look like a highlight in my paint, not like I just painted an oval on there. So I think that center spot will be my most challenging point on this headboard. The sides are working out fairly easily. So a couple of questions for you. Number one, do you paint the backside of headboards? Um, so here's the thing. I looked, <clears throat> I looked at this headboard. Um, I turned it around if it wasn't so massive. I looked at the construction of it. I turned it around. These legs go on to the backside. So I did paint the legs. I didn't do any further than that. And that's just so when you're looking at the side, all you see is the paint. Is the paint. You're not going to see any unpainted portion. Other than that, it's 100% going against a wall. You can't see any paint where it wraps. It's not finished by the manufacturer back there. So I have an article on my um, website, A Brush by Brandy, of why I don't paint furniture backs. And the three reasons are, I look for where the manufacturer stopped the original finishes. That's where I should be expected to stop the original finishes. Um, so I take cues with her from the manufacturer. I consider how my piece is going to be used. If it's a side table and it's expected that it's going to be sitting out in the center of the room, that's something that I would expect to finish the back on too. Um, and number three, if you look at your furniture pieces, manufacturers do not finish the backs on them. 
So I think by thinking you have to, you're holding yourself to a higher standard than what most store-bought finishes come in. So no, I generally do not paint the backs of my pieces unless it's something that makes sense. Otherwise, I think it's, it tends to be a waste of paint. This is 100% going against a wall. <laughs> so Brittany says, well, what if she wants to put her bed in the middle of the room? Then, so I, many. then I would I would ask a customer to tell me that. If that's something you're concerned about, ask the person it's going to. But I've never had a person come to me and say, oh, you didn't finish the back of my piece? Never have I had someone say that to me. Uh, in hundreds of pieces. So usually when I'm doing a custom, I've seen pictures of the room. So this is a couple, they're buying a home, they're gonna turn it into a bed and breakfast. Like I get the lowdown when I'm doing a piece like this. I know who it's gonna be for. Even if you don't, you have to make that decision. And then if they want you to paint the back after the fact, then they can ask for that and you can choose to charge them more to do it or whatever you'd like to do if you didn't do it already. Now, another random uh, question for you is not necessarily on this piece, but do you have a trick to painting like small cubby holes if you can't get a brush or something in there? Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I was doing it last night. You can get a brush in most of them. You just need the right brushes, you guys. Do you wonder why they make all these different 10 kinds of brushes? Hang on, I'm gonna show you something. Hang on, hang on, hang on, I'm digging through my brushes. Okay, here's an example, a couple of examples I'll give you. Uh, all right, I'm not finding the one I'm looking for, and I don't want to dig for too long. You see brushes that come with these really long handles like this? That's because my arm is not meant to fit in everywhere. So this is the French tip brush from Mixie Doll. These are available, by the way. Um, and these are meant for getting in corners. So I was painting, I'm painting my RV cabinets right now, and I couldn't get up into a corner or recess in the cabinets, but guess what this brush could. And all I needed to do is hold it by the very tip and brush it. So there are brushes, specialty brushes made for stuff like that. There are brushes that have an angle to them where this tip kicks up. And then if you need to get into a Top Good. angle, you can yeah. get into that. So you need to have the right brushes for what you're painting. And different brushes do different things. But the French tip brush, it's got this long handle for a reason. It's meant for getting back into cubbies. It's got a tip on it so you can get it into corners. It's got an angle so it will ride the corners. These are specialty brushes. They're tools made for doing different things. You know, this is another example. This is an artist brush with a long handle on it. But this would ride a narrow crevice if I needed it to. It would get a really small space if I needed it to. So there are brushes for what you need it to do. Um, just make sure you have the right tools for the job that you're doing. How am I doing on time? Ugh, yeah, I know I'm not gonna get through this. <clears throat> so I'm looking at the center of this and I'm not really caring for, it looks like an oval to me. What I'm thinking I wanna do is I wanna brush a little bit more of that vintage duck egg into the sawmill gravy and get rid of the separation between those colors. I don't have enough time to go back and rework that on the camera tonight. This piece is gonna take a while. Like I told you, I expect, I'd expect it to take me about an hour to do a coat on this off camera and longer to do it on camera. Working at small sections at a time. The sides are definitely easy. Those large open spaces are always harder. So Amber chimed in uh, only because you mentioned RV cabinets. Oh, I'm painting my she RV She has a fifth wheel right she wants to do a makeover on. Yes, it's a big project. It's a big project. We took all the doors out, all the hinges off, all the handles off. <clears throat> uh, my RV is taken apart right now. It's a big job. But it's like doing a kitchen. It is like doing a kitchen. Um, we just did a kitchen not that long ago. Looking for my brush for my Stormy Seas. A little bit more paint. Um, we just did a friend's kitchen not that long ago. It's a lot of work. So be prepared for that. I did do a coat of slick stick underneath my RV cabinets. Um, and that's because they're not all real wood. Or, I mean, we have a 32 foot, 32 foot? 32 footer. 
32 foot RV. It's got a weird combination of real wood and not real wood on the cabinets, right? You notice that? That's uh -huh. kind of weird. And the cuts are different. Yeah. They're not 45 miter, they're 45, and then there are uh, like shaker style. So it's a it's just a different type of project. So I just went ahead and slick sticked all of them, even though some were real wood and some were not. <laughs> Dana said you'd probably get another 10,000 followers on YouTube if you posted stuff about your camper makeover. Uh, I just started it. I will vlog on it when I'm done. I'm taking pictures. Are you really? The way. Huh. Huh? Will I vlog on I it? I said, are you really? Yeah. I didn't oh, know you were. Am I taking pictures? I do actually listen to some things you say. Yeah. I know. Okay. All right. So I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna leave it. I know you guys want me to rework this center spot. I don't like it at all. It's making me really unhappy right now. Kind of reminds me of like a. I don't want to get too artistic here with you. Like a Van Gogh sunset. That is not the look I'm going for. Yep. So exactly. Here's how I feel about that. Yep. Bam. Okay, I just won't do the bottom section. I'm gonna do this, try to do this fast. And go. Okay, what I meant is I'm gonna take my vintage duck egg and I'm gonna brush it way further into each other. So instead of having such a narrow line where they meet up, I'm gonna let it be much wider. I'm gonna take it to like this wide instead of here. I'm gonna brush it straight almost to the center of this so that I end up with a color Sorry, I'm going to stand in the way. No, you're okay. So you do have your own YouTube. Obviously, Facebook. I ha I'm on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Like, if it exists, if I'm it, on there. If it's got power to it, you're on there? <laughs> yeah. Um, I have my own website. My, my website's being rebuilt right now, too. So it's actually going to be really nice pretty soon. Now, not to go through all the colors. Uh, are these posted on? I will add them to the post when I'm done. Okay. But, uh, Stormy Seas, Vintage Duck Egg, Hurricane Gray, Sawmill Gravy is what I've worked on tonight. I'm just doing this. I'm not going to talk my way through it. So that Yeah, just go. That's why I didn't want to ask you about colors. So we've added four colors. Oh. So here I have dried sage, but I have not worked that on camera. So do you guys see how I took this down from being such an orb? Like a, the floating orb in the center? Yeah. You see the difference? Did that help at all? <laughs> and that was just brushing straight through. I'm using my vintage duck egg brush. It's picking up the sawmill gravy and it's created this in-between color, this nice light. Sorry, I was just laughing because between Brittany and I believe it was Cheyenne, they're asking about dancing uh, videos on TikTok. Oh, I do have a TikTok account. We do not dance on there. I tried you, tried, to, you tried to get me. I tried. But... For, I tried to get him to do a really simple one with the kids, and they were like, nope, nope, not happening. Okay, and now this is just my vintage duck egg. I <clears> added <throat> a little bit of paint to my brush so that I can true up the color just around the edges. Okay, and I like this much, much, much better. Agreed. So you see what I did where I brushed it straight through the center, straight through it. And now I'm coming back and just truing up the color just around the edges to get it back to where it's a little bit darker on the edges. Just added a little bit of paint to my brush. Take it around the other tripod and get you over here. All right, so I like that much better. Ignore down here, because I'm now I need to rework down here a little bit too, but I like this much, much, much better. Way softened up that color. So don't be afraid to brush your colors together right over the top of each other. All right, I'm being challenged for TikTok. <laughs> oh, if you accept that, I will be shocked. We'll pick an easy one. What's this, Marry Me Juliet? Oh, I don't know. I'll have to go okay. look. All right. Is that an easy one? What are you trying to say? Oh, well, I watched some TikTok videos, huh? but I don't know if that's an easy one or Ooh. not. Wait, wait. I mean, your dancing skills are top notch and all oh, that. Yeah. All right, you guys. So that was, uh, we fixed our vintage duck egg into the sawmill gravy. I really like that combination. It's very soft and pretty.
very soft and clean. So I'm gonna, I'll fix this down here because I like this right here. Yeah, we good? It's not all good right now. I know that it's not. I need to come back and fix some spots. This right here, I'll fix. We didn't do up here at all. But I feel like that center part I'm happy with at least. That's good. So I'm gonna pop off. I'm gonna let you guys go. Sean needs to go do some TikTok dancing. <laughs> <laughs> He's already practicing. He's way ahead of you. <laughs> I'm gonna get the hula hoop out. I'm gonna let you guys go. But know that when you're working on a project like this, big open spaces are always gonna be the hardest. So tops, sides are always harder to do than smaller areas like a drawer front. Like I can blend over a drawer front in five minutes, but this will take me a couple tries to get it right. So be patient, practice. Um, all right, you guys, it's Thursday night. You guys have a great weekend. Um, I'll be back here next Thursday. And um, really not. Yeah. yeah, that's it. All right. All right, you guys, I'll let you go. Have a good weekend. Good night. All right, we're going to go there.